Hey guys, so let me recap where I'm at on the John Deere. So the last couple days, you know, I worked at getting the um, free air, free warm chamber in. This is uh, uh, a function of the engine where you, uh, in a cold weather start, you turn the key to the left for like 15 seconds. This particular uh, thermometer uh, senses that you've done that. It heats up, it glows red. This is a diesel fuel drop where it drops drips of oil on top of that sensor as it's glowing red, ignites a fire, heats it up. That air is heated in this chamber right, right here. And it is injected when you turn the key to the start position and the starter's turning over. It's sucking that air into the chambers in the, the piston uh, area and firing warmed air. So that's, that's one of the systems. I did test it. it. It had continuity, but when I plugged it in, it uh, started melting the wire here. And so I'm thinking, geez, I must, uh, I'm not sure why it would be grounded out. I thought maybe it was touching down here uh, where it meets, the, the screw meets the casting, but no, that wasn't it. And uh, so, you know, maybe maybe it's inside, maybe the issue's inside. So I ordered a new one. They weren't terribly expensive, but uh, I really don't know what else to do having tested the continuity on it and uh, didn't really find that to be a problem. So got that in, got my sleeves on my three injectors torqued down. It was like between 15 and 19 foot pounds. Uh, I was gonna use my quarter inch, uh, you know, that's in inches the torque, but um, it, didn't, um, it didn't really convert well on that handle, the, the adjustments. So, I just went with my larger one. I uh, put in the starter and you know, I had cleaned it up and everything. You know, this, this is the lead from the battery. This is a positive lead that goes to the alternator. Uh, there's really not much in wiring in this and uh, got that done. Put on the water pump, you can't see it here, but the front of the engine, put in the thermostat, the hoses, connected the, uh, the oil line to the supercharger. I'll walk around and show you that on the other side. Um, let's see what else did I do on this side. Of course, I train. I changed. I drained the antifreeze. I flushed it out. I replaced um, uh, the you know old antifreeze. Put the bottle in. Got everything all situated there. Charged up the battery. <clears throat> made the connections on that, put new filters in my uh, uh, air container here. Uh, then um, that takes care of this side of the engine. Um, oh, of course, I did my, my new mechanical oil gauge. Got that all in down here. You can't really see that the way the camera's set up right now, but we talked about it earlier. Got the gauges in. They light up nice, so... Uh, yeah, that's functioning now. I'll take you over on the other side of the tractor here and walk you around. Over here, what I did was I, of course, I put on the manifold stack, you know, to the tractor. And I, I wanted to have it so when I started up, uh, I've got exhaust going out the door. It's not filling up in the garage here. Um, the um, tractor, let me get this turned around here. Supercharger is right, is right here. And um, this is the oil connector, the line that I talked about on the other side that I connected. Uh, put on the hoses, you'll notice that I left the hose off between this air box and the intake of the supercharger because when I started this up, you know, I don't anticipate a problem, but if some, for some goofy reason, if the injector 
uh, a diesel injector is not functioning correctly or something, and it's uh, injecting too much diesel fluid or something into a chamber, a piston a cylinder chamber, uh, it could run on me. And um, Or if this supercharger inside here, there is a fan runs on a shaft, and of course it's, it's taking air, heated air here, from the exhaust and it's you know it's um it's running it through this air system here well this this uh shaft in between the this area if it's loose and it's sucking air when it's not supposed to it could suck oil from this oil line into the engine and uh, that and feed the cylinders literally oil that it's not supposed to be getting and you could have a runaway event that's one of the problems that could occur not very often but you know watch youtube videos on runaway diesels and you'll see what i'm talking about um, anyway so i have uh, this open so that if it did run away on me i could stick a plate of steel. I don't like using wood because it's porous and not flat sometimes because of warps and I wouldn't want it to suck air. I could put a piece of steel up against this, stop the airflow and starve the engine of uh, air and it would die. Another thing I could do is if it was running away and I was sitting in the captain's chair up there, I could put it in fifth gear, uh, very high gear, let the clutch out and there wouldn't be... Uh, enough torque in in that situation to to drive the tractor so the engine would just die out it's a little hard on the clutch to do that though so i would prefer not to do that so that's that's about it put on um put on these air tanks and um back over here Just down here. I checked and, and uh, changed the, the uh, fuel filter and uh, put a new, new line here. The old one was really pretty bad shape. Put a new line in and then uh, bled the, the system of air. These two screws here, you loosen them up and the fluid will flow and you see the bubbles come out you make a mess you got to have something on the floor to catch that stuff but uh, uh and then i did this one here too the screw here and bled that one and so we're all good and uh the only thing that i have ready to go here which was a bit of a disappointment let me walk back over So I was going to crank over the engine, and on these three, this one, this one, and this one, these three intakes, the fuel injector intakes, the fuel goes into these injectors. Before I start it up, uh, I have these finger loose so that I can um, turn over the engine a little bit, you know, few seconds at a time get to where I'm seeing oil uh, or diesel come out of these fittings and uh, I won't have air in the line then and so I had that ready to go and then I turned on the key and nothing so I'm like what the heck so I pulled out the starter again Check, make sure I had the wiring right and, you know, opened it up and make sure that, you know, there wasn't anything obvious going on inside of the starter. Um, I noticed it, it, um, it was, uh, it was getting electric, but it just wasn't, wasn't, I could hear the clicking solenoid here, the starter solenoid up under the, the dash clicking, but not the solenoid, but it's a safety switch, I believe. And uh, anyway, I've decided I have to buy uh, a new starter and that is gonna run me a few bucks. I did recall after thinking about it that the guy that I bought the tractor from said that he had been starting it with a screwdriver 
and he was having problems with the solenoid. So, you know, I couldn't even get the thing to turn with, with the uh, screwdriver by shorting it out, you know, against the uh, ground, the positive terminal against the ground, but um, that's just probably a function of a bad solenoid, I would, I, I, or, or maybe an electrical issue inside the starter, I, I really don't know. So instead of trying to rebuild it and be disappointed and practice on that, I decided this is probably better if I just buy it. I got, you know, at least a decent price on it. I didn't have to pay a core. I got a brand new one as opposed to a rebuilt one. So that'll all work. So that's the update. It's supposed to be here Wednesday. I'm going to try and start it. Once I do that, I'm going to let you guys hear it run and we'll just have to be patient. So till then, adios amigos.